you very much. Okay, so let's quickly move on to the panel session. We have an amazing panel session. Everything I, I said flows nicely into, one speaker flows into the next one. Just hold the power of the mind. Um, I think Doctor was talking about limiting beliefs. So please, just your mind, your mind. Um, I think our quote phrase should be, uh, your body will not take you to the place where your mind cannot take you. All right, so quickly, we will be inviting the last set of speakers. This one, <laughs> trust me, you need to listen to these people. They, they have created their award. I'm sure you know when you hear the word royal, you know, you know what she stands. Okay, are you ready? Let's go. So I'm going to bring up an exceptional award-winning frontline screenwriter. Oh, I went to her and I told her she was the one who did my first audition when I was getting into the industry. She's a screenwriter, a filmmaker, and a legendary producer who practices in Nollywood, Nigeria. She also is the founder of Royal Arts Academy, a film television training school in Lagos, Nigeria. She ventured into filmmaking when it was not fashionable to do so. She boldly launched her own production company in that time, Theater Images, in 1994, after resigning from a job in the bank. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome this iconic woman, M.M. Isong Misodi. Let's appreciate her, please, as she comes. Let's put your to, hands together. To the altar, I mean to the stage, yes, ma'am. Welcome. All right, also, we will be bringing up very shortly the founder of Skywise Group. He's a Nigerian-driven entrepreneur and an author he has over 14 years banking and business experiences. He's a self-motivated and goal-oriented individual who responds positively to pressure and uses analytical styles of negotiation combined with a positive thinking to generate effective solutions. He is a graduate of accountancy from Durban Polytechnic and MBA from Lagos Business School. Please put your hands together as we welcome Dr. Abuyere L. Elvis, founder of Skywise Group. I mean, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think, okay, so you do us quickly. Yes. And I, can. and I have the honor of speaking to the both of them today, just asking them questions that will inspire us very, um, well, hopefully inspire us. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much, sir. My name is Mary Jane Ubaja. Thank you so much. My name is Mary Jane Ogbaja, um, and I'll be anchoring this session. Today's topic is Create Your World. We have been listening to tons and tons and tons of speakers. We know that you are doing well in your, in your um, separate industries, in the entertainment industry. Um, quite a few people here have walked up to me to ask me, oh, I want to get into acting. I get that a lot when I, when I see it. Yeah, I want to get into acting. Um, I want to get into entertainment. And then how do I, my question is, what is the difference? How do you carve a niche in your own chosen field? If you want to get into acting or whatever it is, how do you separate yourself? How do you become a standard? How do you create your own world in that field? Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm actually, um, even though he said we shouldn't say we're blessed, but I, I, I am blessed to be here. Listening to the last speaker, I really enjoyed that, so I'm really happy to be here. Um, getting into entertainment, well, I, I, I want to say that it's all about passion. Uh, for me, uh, as a writer, I've always um, been very passionate about um, entertainment. So I think that if you have the passion, I, um, you, you should just venture into it. I, I used to love watching TV a lot, and I just kind of knew that when, when I was in school, I knew that I was going to go in, in that direction. Um, but not necessarily as an actress, I decided to start by writing, creating my world, creating what I wanted to see come to life. And I felt that I, want, I also wanted to be in charge of what I put out there. So I decided to become a producer. So I could be the one to kind of, sort of, be in charge 
of what I had written so that it would not be interpreted, even though, yes, that's the director's work, bringing a different interpretation to your work. But as a producer, you still have some sort of authority over what you have created. That's, that's very fantastic. Okay, so I want to make it very, very, very practical. And I'm coming to you, Sir Elvis. But, um, you know, it would seem far-fetched to some people here in here. Just you left the bank and then you decided to write and you wanted to be in charge of your own content, your own production, and then you went on to do it. So in very practical terms, but very briefly, how did you write your first? And how did it get onto television? How did you translate it to a movie? This takes money, this takes maybe opportunity or something. What, what was that point? How did you get it up there? How did you become who you are? Um, when I came out of the university, there was really nothing much happening in the entertainment industry. So, I mean, it was only natural that I would venture into another sector. And I went into banking. I did some courses that enabled me to go into banking. And while I was in the bank, I, I never stopped dreaming about that. So when the first movie... I think, well, the first movie that kind of made waves in the industry was uh, Living in Bondage. When it was released, I just knew that that's where I belonged and I quit my job and decided to go into uh, movie making. I, I, I would say that um, I kind of had a lot of belief in myself. It wasn't easy raising funding to make uh, movie, and I didn't just want to write and give it to someone to produce. I decided to go all out and look for the money to produce by myself, even if I had to do most of the work behind the scenes by myself. So I just, I, well, my parents assisted with whatever little they could, but I was the producer, the costumier, the director. Well, I wasn't the director. I did a lot of behind the scenes. They say you, you, if you, you will fail if you plan to fail. So I planned, if you don't plan rather, I planned my work. I wrote the scripts, went around looking for locations, went around looking, going to my friends to get costumes, everything. I cooked the food in the morning oh, wow. and took it to look set. to set, exactly. So I, I took care of a lot of things so I wouldn't spend so much money. So that's actually how I started. And um, I, it was not easy, but the, it gave me, I was very proud to see what I had done and that motivated me to keep going. Oh yeah, when, when you have a success story, it motivates you to continue being successful. Okay, so that just speaks to the power of starting, that you had a vision in your mind, which he talked about is the first thing on, on the steps to creating wealth, that you catch a vision and you have the audacity to just start. So you had the audacity to just start with the little resources that you had. Okay, thank you very much for that. Sir, over to you. I want to know, how, how did you start? How, how did you get here, um, under 40? How is it that you have, you ring success? How, how? Where did it start from? Were you, very, were you born with a silver spoon? And, <laughs> you know, was greatness thrust upon you? Good evening, everyone. Uh, for me, I wasn't born with a silver spoon. I, I'm just like, a, like every Nigeria who is hungry for success, who want to be great, who want to leave impact and legacy. I, I started in 2007 when I joined the bank, Sky Bank then. Um, I fell in love with one of the accounting our product, the uh, yeah, account product, uh, it's called Skywise. And I love that account so much with the exterior buy. Even though I was not employed to be a marketer but a cashier, I used to market that product for my friends, my family. Oh, come and open an account. It's called Skywise account, whereby you have to save for your kid and so on. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry. I don't know if, if did you get it? Did you hear him? He said he was not in accounting department. He was not in marketing. I was not in marketing he was not department. In marketing, but he used to market. But I used to on. market a particular product for the bank. It's called Skywise Accounts. Whereby it's for kids, you see, for your kid and so on. So I fell in love with it. And I, I developed passion. So I, I, after three years, I left uh, the bank, Sky Bank, and I joined First Bank in 2010. And when I was employed to First Bank in 2010, uh, I, was, I was posted to 
Abuja uh, to head a department called General Services. And that General Services, we have to be in charge of opening branches, uh, taking care of board of directors, and so on. And part of the duty we do, we render ticketing services, hotel reservation, and visa processing for board of directors. So um, I discovered that uh, we used to uh, have agents uh, that we used to contract all these services to. So something came to my mind one day. I said, ah, why can't I just open a travel agency so that I can be using my travel agency to be running the ticketing the, for the bank? But I know that I can do that maybe outside the bank because you can't be working in the banking sector and also be doing a business or something else. So I registered in 2013. And when I wanted to register the company, I said, what name am I going to give it to you? I've heard a lot of like our Igbo brothers, they use that name. I said, OK. Skywise Travels and Tour came to my mind. So I called a lawyer and they registered Skywise Travels and Tour in 2013. And whenever we have like want to procure ticketing or visa processing, instead of me using an external agent, I use my own company, Skywise Travels and Tour. I ended up the, the bank pay into my company. I sort out those agents I we use, and I became like a custodian with the bank and Skywise. So in 2015, I developed I, and I discovered something inside me. I discovered that I have so much to offer to life than what the bank was paying me for. So I decided to put in for resignation. Even though I knew that uh, at that point in time, the Skywise Travel Center was giving me some little income, but not as, as maybe as my public sustain my monthly expenses. So but I, I begin to think outside the bus, outside Sky, uh, Travel Center, what can I do? Because I discovered that a lot of people started buying tickets on their phones, uh, without using travel agency, and that began to affect the travel industry. So then I discovered something that, okay, what uh, is happening in our society, calling it by financial gap. The bank does not attend to people. Maybe, for instance, you have like emergency financial crisis. You run to the bank for a loan, maybe like for 500,000, 1 million, they don't, they don't care about your turnover in the past. If you don't have the collateral, maybe it's building or some other that can stand for you, they can give it to you. So I say, okay, I can bridge this gap. Because before I left the bank, few people come to me, oh, Elvis, I want 50,000 naira. I have my laptop to drop. So they'll drop their laptop. After a few, few weeks, 30 days, they'll pay back, they'll retrieve their laptop. So I, and I call my lawyer when I resign. I say, you know what? I want to have a microfinance bank. He now told me that, okay, for me to have a microfinance bank, I have to minimal uh, capital base, then was 20 million naira, which I don't have. And I said, okay, what can I do? He now told me, okay, I can register a cooperative. So I started incorporating when I left the bank in 2015, begin to give out. I actually, I, when I left the bank, I think I had give and take. I have like um, um, maybe close to two million era. And I said, okay, let me start with this. So the first month I opened the cooperative, the following month I was due. I lost everything. The people I gave the money to turned out to be dubious people. So I, 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 I begin to ask myself, wow. Why did I leave the bank? Even my family started blaming me, say, Shay, we told you, don't leave now, you have resigned. Because I tried to have a comfortable job in the bank with the car and everything. So I found myself doing Uber. I've already started my company, I already have an office. I started doing Uber. Any money I make from Uber every now and then, um, then um, every day, I put into my business just to want to pick start the business. So lo and build, I read a book, OPM, other people money, other people ideas, other people resources. So that actually expanded my mind, just like uh, what Mr. Uh, Oguchiku said, vision is the vehicle to create wealth. So that empowered my mind to build capacity. So okay, I can actually trade on people resources, people idea, and other people what uh, properties. So I begin to equip myself, begin to tell people about my product. Okay, you know what? You can invest in Skywise and you get a certain amount of return on a quarterly basis, on a yearly basis, and. Lo and behold, in less than six months to one year, I begin to annex investors, attract investors who probably believe in the system. And after two to three years, I realized that I've built uh, a system that is closing to almost one billion naira. And one thing, you, uh, uh, and one thing I told myself, I said, okay, and I place a deadline for myself because I'm not going to run with people's funds at the end of the day. I can't stand. I told, I defined something in my mind. I say, I'm going to use people's funds to create my own wealth to create my own world. So after four to five years, and I'm going to return it back to them. 
And by the special grace of God, today is to the, uh, this year will make us seven years in Skywise. And below and beyond, I have been able to use other people's wealth to create wealth for myself. And I've been able to return people's wealth for themselves, well, to them back, sorry. Now, and I expanded the business because I discovered that, okay, uh, the loaning business is not sustainable anymore. And I, uh, and I expanded to an automobile in business. In Abuja, I have the biggest automobile section in Abuja. Before you mention one of the five biggest automobile shop in Abuja, you mentioned Skywise Group. To the extent whereby we are the ones supplying National Assembly, uh, Kano State Government, and so on. And this is what we have been, have been able to do for the past seven years. So I said all that because I believe that everything we want to see, we can create it within ourselves. On the day we unveil it, it begins to work for us. And that is what I believe. And that is how I started my journey. I was just going to project straight to the theater mood. <laughs> so, um, you know, the first thing that caught me about what he said, okay, the first thing that caught me, yeah, would have room for questions, just one or two, um, as um, Auntie Ivy said to us, just one or two questions. But the first thing that caught me about what he said was when he was in the bank and he was not in a certain department, but because he was really passionate about marketing, he was marketing a certain product. And, and, and I'm saying that because very often I hear this as a question and as a complaint um, when I'm in an organization, uh, when it's not my job to do that, how should I do it? I hear funny things like that. But he was able to take, that's a visionary person who's able to just be a leader. It's personal leadership, motivation. You be an entrepreneur in the place where you are employed. Okay, so th that one caught me. And then just the audacity to move. And um, I don't know if time would permit you to, permit me to, um, permit you to answer this question on capacity building. Because you said when you heard about other people's money, other people's resources, and then you went in to build capacity. That's huge. Now, um, in what way? Okay, yeah. So when I talk about capacity, because uh, I have actually identified a vision which I want to run with, and I begin to feed my mind in the direction of the result I want to see. So I can't say that I have a vision in five years, in 10 years, and I don't have the capacity to fulfill that vision. So every now and then I read books. Now I'm an author of a book, which I will run with the challenges of life. And I also set deadline for myself. I go for trainings, like uh, this second time of meeting Uguchuku. There was a training we had in Abuja, Gordon Leadership Center, which I paid 1.5 million era for just five days. Uh, why? Because I want to equip my mind because I know that, okay, what I'm doing today, we want to stand the test of time. Because I also believe one of my role models, my more, I always say something, if you come into this world and each other, other people have invented, have created, without creating your own, you are a thief. So what we are benefiting today is as a result of what other people have created. So that is why I'm building myself so that I can be able to what? To create something that will stand the test of time. Amazing. Please put your hands together for him. Capacity building, he said he started reading books and he started investing in trainings. All right, so we have room for questions. Just one, one question each for each speaker. So please, who would go with the first question? If you don't have any question, me, I'll ask. And that's it. First question, anybody? Can I see your hand raised? Yes, okay. Gosh, he's far away. Who else, quickly? Okay, one more person. So just two people. So much effort. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for that session, sir. My question to you is simple. It has to do with clarity. I mean, when you did share your experience and how you had to go into marketing despite it wasn't really your thing, um, I'd like to know, at what point do we really know that this is meant for us? You know, in our time and the challenges some of us deal with, you realize, especially for gifted people, you have a lot you can do, you have a lot of value you can offer. And again, you want to pick up something that you can focus on and create value and sustain it for a long time. How do you know? At what point you, do you know that this thing you're doing 
is going to be what you will do for a long time to put consistency and build a system around it. All right, All right. so thank you. Um, so for me first, uh, before, for you to know, for you to know if have a clarity, you must know yourself. You must, you must be able to identify the true you. Like I tell my team every now and then, the true me is not being the CEO of Skywise Group. The true me is the inner quality I have embedded in me, which I'm still building on. So you must identify yourself. When you discover yourself, then you begin to what, see clarity of a vision you want to do. Because when you cannot discover yourself, direction can never be unveiled. So you must discover yourself, and you now know where you're going to. Just like Ogulpu said, vision is what is a vehicle of creating wealth. So when you discover yourself, you begin to see vision of what you want to accomplish. That's profound. That's profound. Please put your hands together for that. It was Marshawn Evans who said that the first, the first rung of the purpose ladder is self-discovery. If you don't know yourself, then that's, that's another thing. All right. Thank you, Ma, for that wonderful session. Um, I have a question. So how were you, like, because you just left the banking sector, so how were you able to know the right people work with, how were you able to find out things about the um, entertainment industry? Because obviously it wasn't easy for you, so how did you do um, it? Okay, um, because I was very interested in entertainment, I studied everything entertainment. I slept entertainment, I, I, I lived entertainment. So even while I was in the banking sector, I was always writing, I never missed, I, I'm sure there's, there was hardly any film. I didn't watch, I'm talking about foreign films. So I understood the sector. Coming into Nollywood at that time, we, all of us were basically new really. Yes, there were a few people practicing and um, I did um, go to one or two of them to try to get a foot in the door. But being a newcomer, it was actually quite dif difficult and I was very young then. A young girl just coming in, not just to, not to act, but to produce. Nobody actually took me serious. I was looking for money, I couldn't find. But then while I was in the bank, I, I, I gained a bit of experience and I had um, contacts. So I was able to, and I was also in a finance house. For those, of, um, for those who know about, we had some finance houses those days that you would, um, like money markets, go around looking for money to invest and get you know, brokerage and all of that. So I had a bit of experience in that and I made money a little bit in the, financial sector. So I decided that, you know, if nobody's going to answer me and give me a chance or um, open a door for me, I'm going to build one. And so I decided that I'm going to make my own movie no matter what it took me. I started with only 60,000 Naira. I'll never forget it. And I borrowed that from my mother. I just, I added maybe about 40 or 50,000 at the time. That's what I, was, I had managed to save when I left the bank. And I shot my movie with about 100,000. I was bold. I was young. So I, I looked at the people that I admired in the industry. One of them was um, Tunde Kilani in the Yoruba industry. I loved his vision, I loved his films, and I liked the quality that he brought to his film. So it was him that I, I walked into his office and I told him, I don't have money, but I want to make this film. This is my script, I wrote it. <laughs> I think I was very, he was shocked at my audacity. And he was, okay, I will assist you. What do you have? I said, I have nothing but 10,000 Naira and I want equipment, and I want the best you have. He gave me the equipment and said, okay, <laughs> shoot the movie and bring it. I said, I went further and I said, can I have a cameraman? I don't have anybody. And he gave me some of the best crew that he had. I didn't have any money, and I, I was a very small, I think I was barely 20, 21, and I was here shooting, and nobody wanted to respect me because of that. Uh, the fact that I was you know, a woman, you will know how that goes and commanding, all, I wasn't really commanding, but I knew what I wanted because I was very passionate about it. And if you are not getting my, uh, my if, if you do not get what I want to do, I'm going to stop the production and I'm going to, whether I paid you or not, I don't care. So I did the movie, it came out, I really thank God for it. I went ahead, at that time there was nothing like um, having a premiere or showing the movie. Because I came from the corporate world, I, I felt I should show the movie in a place like this. Because entertainment is all about glam. It's all about, you know, razzmatazz, glitter and glamour. I decided to use my little contact that I had in the corporate world to organize a, a premiere for the first movie that I did. That is how I got my foot into the door of Nollywood. Wow. 
Thank you, Mark. Wow, 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 wow. Um, that's rich. So what I hear is vision, driven by passion and courage. Vision, driven by passion and courage. That's it. Please put your hands together for them. Um, the last thing will be final words. Any final words? Yeah, um, in creating our world, I just want to understand the fact that it's not what we will envisage. It's something that we have to go after every day. Whatever you want to see for your life, whatever you want to live in the sound of time, is something that is within you. It's not something that is ahead of you. Everything we want to live, we want to generate, we want people to benefit, benefit from is inside us. So until the day we begin to unveil them, it will never stand the test of time. I believe that as a young people, the future of Africa is entrepreneurship. And this is why we need to take that position now. Do not start and start competing with people who started five years, 10 years, or 20 years ago. Start gradually and begin to build capacity whatever direction probably you have found yourself. And develop passion and set a deadline for yourself. Don't wait like the presentation we had this morning. Don't wait, okay, in the next five years, this will be begin to what, walk towards the next 24 hours. What you achieve every day, you can do it better the following day and the following day. And that is how you begin to grow. Yes, people will laugh at you. You will fail. Challenges will be there. Like for me, one of my, my, my favorite uh, passages in my book I wrote, I said, the challenges of life that is pursuing me every day does not stand the vision that is driving me. Okay. Cannot stop it, no matter what. Okay. Because I've come to understand the fact in life that challenges of life have access to everybody but does not have control over everybody. So you can choose to say, okay, you know what? I will summon these challenges, no matter what, and run with it every day. Because I've come to realize the fact that young people out there probably just give up because of the challenges they are facing. Some say, oh, I don't have the resources, I don't have the money. For me, like I tell people, you don't really need money to start a great company, a great business. All you just need is an idea. When you can polish your idea better, you somebody that can that's going to invest in your idea. Don't go and tell people, say, oh, come and invest in me where you don't have anything to offer. You must have something to offer mentally. You must have something to offer in all aspects. And when you probably can talk yourself out, out in the direction, you, see, you begin to attract the kind of investors that you need for your life. Because radical economic transformation is not what we demand from the government anymore. But it's what we demand from ourselves. And that is one thing I believe we can do to save Nigeria and save Africa. Can we appreciate Amazing. this? Uh, Amazing. What, last words, ma'am? Um, I always say, uh, for me, what drives me? Passion, perseverance, and prayer. Those are the three things I live by. That's what I would say. Just keep, keep at it. Believe in yourself. Do not care, like my, uh, he said, uh, don't worry about the challenges. Just keep believing and create your thing. That's what I did, and that's what I live by. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put it together for the last PPP. Passion, perseverance, and please, please, Mr. Elvis, please, we like it. We have a presentation, ma'am. Please, uh, yes, ma'am, please, we have a presentation for you. Can we appreciate this amazing, amazing panelist? Thank you so much for doing justice. How about your own point? Oh. Excellent, sir. Yes. Wow, thank you very much for that session. Very insightful. And I believe that we've taken one or two things away. If you have a dream today, don't give up. Find a way, make it happen. And that's what they did. I want to appreciate you, Ememi Song. She's one of the most unassuming people I know. And she has put Nigeria on the world map with what she does in the Nollywood space. But she's one of the most humble, most unassuming people. And we are really blessed to have her on the platform today. So on behalf of Ubon King Foundation, I want to say thank you very much. And um, keep doing what you do. This guy, in short, it's just the starting. Yeah, so Thank that's the foundation. You. Thank you so much. It got carried away. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And Dr. Elvis, we actually we actually together in um, Kutonu a, um, a few months ago, and we received a, a doctorate on the same platform and. He spoiled us a lot when we were there. So it's good to have you here. God bless you for all you do. And we pray that your business will continue to grow in leaps and bounds. Thank you for coming to Thinkation 2022. God bless you.
You know, this is the only country where you see a photographer taking pictures and they are the ones smiling. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 